Assalamu alaikum students. Today we are going to continue with the same topic, The Day the Dam Broke by James Herber. In previous lecture, I told you about Aunt Edith Taylor and her experience in the movie theater. She tells us that when she was running in the street, she asked one lady that, what is it? Why they are all running towards east? And she replied, don't ask me, ask God. And this reply tells us that half of the people who were running towards east has no clear idea why, that why they are running all over towards east. And then she tells that when I reached Grant Avenue, I was so spent that Dr. H.R. Mallory, you remember Dr. Mallory, the man with the white beard who looks like Robert Browning? Well, Dr. Mallory, whom I had drawn away from at the corner of Fifth Town, uh, passed me. And I, it's got us, he shouted, and I felt sure that, uh, that whatever it was did have us. For you know what conviction Dr. Mallory's statements always carried. I didn't know at the time what he meant, but I found out later. So here he, she says that, uh, that she was running, and then she asked this lady, and after that, uh, she passed Grant Avenue, and she saw Dr. Mallory, who actually she has crossed. Uh, while she was running but he has taken over and uh, she uh, uh, asked uh, Thurber as in the letter to remind him that do you remember Dr. Mallory he looks like Robert Browning Robert Browning was the uh, famous poet of his time well he, she says that Dr. Mallory was so much scared and he was running and he, he was screaming it's got us he shouted so at that particular time auntie always uh, almost think that whatever he said is true that whatever was coming behind uh, them was has taken over them or is almost reached them but uh, as he says that dr Mally's statement uh, always always carried some kind of authenticity uh, but later on she realized that it was not so there was a boy behind him on roller skates and Dr. Mallory mis mistook the swishing of the skates for the sound of rushing water. He eventually reached the Columbus School for Girls at the corner of Parsons Avenue and Town Street where he collapsed, expecting the cold frothing waters of Suhaito to sweep him into oblivion. Suhaito is the name of the river in the Ohio City. So she says that uh, uh, Dr. Mallory actually mistook the roller skate sounds of the boy was wearing. The boy was behind him and he was also on run. So Dr. Mallory mistook the sound of roller skates to be the sound of rushing water and he got confused. But uh, later on when he reached the town street, he was so much tired that he collapsed. He just fall down on the street and then he, uh, you know, let it be like, let the river take him down into oblivion because he has given up. But what happened next? The boy on the skate thrilled past him and Dr. Mallory realized for the first time what he had been running from. And then Dr. Mallory realized that it was not the water, it was just the sound of the roller skates. But uh, what happened? Looking back up the street, he could see no signs of water. But nevertheless, after resting a few minutes, he jogged on east again. So, even though there was no water, he washed it from behind. But uh, he himself, you know, stood up after a few minutes and he started jogging towards east. Uh, because all of them were caught up in this idea that they need to uh, you know, escape from the west and go towards east and save their life. So nobody was thinking straight. He caught up with me at Ohio Avenue. So the aunt and the Dr. Mallory again met on o Ohio Avenue and they uh, where we rested together. So they rested together over there. I should say I should say that about seven hundred people passed us. A funny thing was that all of them were on foot. Nobody seemed to have the courage to stop and start his car. But as I remember it, all cars has to be cranked in those days, which is probably the reason. So she says that uh, at one point they both met and just stopped over there to take some rest. And then she says that uh, I can actually calculate or just give the idea that uh, almost like 700 people were running past through them in front of them. She, count, she does not count it like that, but she gave the idea that there must be 700 people who just ran past them and they were all on foot. So she, it, she finds it funny 
that nobody has taken the car and then she says that uh, if she recalls uh, right the, on in on those times the cars used to be cranked up that means there was a a lev lever at the back of the car which needs to be you know in moved in circular m motion it's called cranking and uh, it helps to start the car so nobody has this uh, time this much time to you to crank up their cars and sit in them and then move on so they were all on foot for the same reason then the author says that the next day the city went about its business as if nothing had happened but there was no joking it was two years or more before you dared treat the breaking of the dam lightly and even now 20 years after there are a few persons like Dr. Mallory who will shut, shut up like a clam if you mention the afternoon of the great run. So the author co completes the whole account by letting you know the what happened at next day. The next day the business was going on as usual and nobody talked about that run which happened the previous day. And even if they did, they never joked about it. It was There was nothing to joke about the situation. It was so much terrible. And he says that even after two years, they never took this thing lightly that the dam has broken. This news was taken very seriously because what they have experienced on that day was enough to make them realize that what if the dam has broken, then what other damages could have happened? and it must have been more horrible than what they have experienced and then he says that even after 20 years that means this account was written after 20 years and he says that even after 20 years uh, uh, the people like dr mallory will shut up like clam clam is a shell which uh, on in sea on seaside that it shuts up and it never uh, it's very difficult to open the shell so uh, Dr. Mallory uh, and the people like him never want to talk about that great run which happened in that afternoon in Ohio City. Let me explain it clearly. So what happened next is that when uh, Aunt Ed Taylor was out of the movie theatre, as she was out of the movie theatre, 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 she was out مجھ سے نہیں پوچھئے خدا سے پوچھئے تو اس سے ہمیں پتہ چلتا ہے کہ زیادہ در لوگوں کو تو آئیڈیا ہی نہیں تھا کہ وہ کیوں ایسٹ کی طرف بھاگ رہے ہیں بس کیونکہ سب بھاگ رہے تھے خوف میں تو وہ بھی انہوں کو جوائن کر لیا پھر وہ کہتی ہیں کہ جب وہ آگے بھاگنے لگیں تو ان کو جو ہے ان کے ساتھ ساتھ ایک اور شخص آئے جو ڈاکٹر میلری تھے شاید وہ ان کو پیچھے چھوڑ کے آگئی تھی بھاگتے ہوئے رستے میں ان کو دیکھا تھا لیکن تو اور وہ اتنے خوبصدہ تھے کہ وہ کہہ رہے تھے چیخ رہے تھے کہ وہ بس پیچھے آ گیا وہ پیچھے آ کے ہم کو پکڑ لیا اس طرح سے کچھ وہ چیخ رہے تھے تو اس وقت ڈاکٹر اس وقت آنٹ آنٹی یہ کہتی ہے کہ اس وقت جو ڈاکٹر کہہ رہے تھے اس بات کو میں یقین مان لیتی لیکن اس کی حقیقت مجھے بعد میں معلوم ہوئی کہ ایسا تو کچھ بھی نہیں تھا پھر وہ یہ اس لیے کہتی ہیں کیونکہ وہ کہتی ہیں کہ ڈاکٹر میلری ایسے شخص ہے کہ جن کی بات کہ میں کچھ وزن ہوتا ہے یا وہ بہت سیریس مائنڈڈ آدمی تھے کہ جن کی بات کہی بھی جو ہے وہ بیکار اور ایسی قامہ خواہ کی کہی بھی نہیں ہوتی اگر وہ یہ کہہ رہے تھے تو شاید ایسا ہی کچھ ہونا ہوتا لیکن ہوا کیا تھا کہ ان کے پیچھے ایک بچہ تھا جو رولر سکیٹس پہ رولر سکیٹنگ کر رہا تھا وہ بھی بھاگ رہا تھا تو اس رولر سکیٹس کی آواز کو ڈاکٹر میلری نے سمجھا کہ پانی کی آواز ہے اور وہ سمجھ رہے تھے کہ بس پانی پی پھر وہ کہتی ہیں کہ ڈاکٹر بھاگتے بھاگتے ایک سٹریٹ پہ آکے بالکل تھک گئے اور ایک دم گر پڑے اور انہوں نے اپنے آپ کو چھوڑ دیا کہ اب جو بھی ہو پانی ہو سلاب ہو وہ ان کو بہا لے جائے لیکن پھر انہوں نے دیکھا کہ ان کے ساتھ ہی سے وہ بچہ گزرا رولر سکیٹنگ میں سکیٹس کرتے ہوئے تو پھر ان کو پتا چلا کہ بھئی یہ تو پانی نہیں یہ تو رولر سکیٹس کی آواز ہے لیکن انہوں نے جب پیچھے مڑ کے دیکھا تو ان کو کوئی پانی نظر نہیں آیا صرف لوگ بھ تب بھی وہ انہوں نے زیادہ غور اس پہ نہیں کیا اور کچھ دو چار منٹ کے بعد خود بھی کھڑے ہو گئے اور ایسٹ کی طرف بھاگنا شروع کر دیا تو آنٹی کہتی ہیں کہ پھر ایک جگہ پہ جا کر پھر وہ ایک ساتھ بھاگنا شروع ہو گئے اور ایک جگہ پہ رکھ کر انہوں نے تھوڑا سا ریسٹ لینے کی کوشش کی کہ تھوڑا تھک گئے تھے تو ادھر کھڑے ہو گئے 
तो वो आंटी कहती हैं कि उनके सामने से कम अज कम सात सौ लोग तो भागते हुए गुजरे होंगे और सब जो थे मतलब ऑन फुट थे नो बडी वॉज टेकिंग अ कार किसी के पास कोई गाड़ी या कोई और व्हीकल नहीं था कि जिसके पर वो सवार होकर भाग रहा हो बल्कि सब अपने पाँव पर यानी कि भागते हुए नज़र आ रहे थे तो फिर वो कहती हैं कि शायद इसलिए क्योंकि उस ज़माने की गाड़ियों को पीछे से चार्ज किया जाता था एक लेवर लगा होता था जिसको गोल गोल घुमाते थे तो वो चार्ज होती थी गाड़ियाँ उस ज़माने में उस तरह की थी तो वो कहती थी कह रही थी कहती हैं कि उस वक्त शायद लोगों का खौफ और टाइम नहीं था कि वो अपनी गाड़ियों को स्टार्ट करते और उस पर बैठ के भागते तो इसी सब सब जो हैं वो ऑन फुट भागते हुए जैसे नज़र आ रहे थे जैसे कि मैराथन में भागा जाता है उस तरह से फिर राइटर कहते हैं जेम्स थर्बर कहते हैं कि दूसरे दिन ऐसा हुआ कि अपने मामूल के मुताबिक बिजनेस स्टार्ट हुआ और सब उस पर मगन हो गए लेकिन किसी ने भी जो गुज़र गया था दिन उसके बारे में मजाक नहीं किया क्योंकि उसमें मजाक करने की कोई गुंजाइश नहीं थी और उसके बाद वो कहते हैं कि मज़ीद दो साल तक कभी भी किसी ने डैम के टूटने की खबर को हल्का नहीं लिया या उसको नज़रअंदाज नहीं किया क्योंकि उन्होंने जो खौफ और जो कैफियत उनके पे गुजरी थी एक दिन पहले उससे उनको समझ में आ गया था कि अगर डैम टूट जाता तो फिर और कितना नुकसान होता तो इसलिए उन्होंने कभी भी इस चीज़ को हल्का नहीं लिया कि डैम टूट गया ऐसी खबरों को उन्होंने हमेशा सीरियस लिया और उसके बारे में सोचा होगा उसके बाद वो कहते हैं कि कम से कम बीस साल गुजर जाने के बाद भी डॉक्टर मेलरी टाइप के लोगों के बारे में वो ये कहते हैं कि अगर उनके उनके सामने उस दिन का जो भगदड़ मची थी उस ग्रेट रन के बारे में तस्करा भी किया जाए तो डॉक्टर मेलरी के टाइप लोग और ख़ुद वो भी अपना मुंह बंद कर लेते हैं और उसके उस दिन के बारे में कभी भी बात करना पसंद नहीं करते या करते ही नहीं हैं सो दिस वॉज द होल अकाउंट विच के जेम्स थर्बर गेव यू इन अ वेरी ह्यूमरस एंड लाइट स्टाइल इन दिस होल अकाउंट यू विल नेवर यू विल नेवर पिक अप द डिटेल्स ऑफ द डेथ एंड द डिस्ट्रक्शन बिकॉज ही नेवर पॉइंटेड आउट दोज थिंग्स ही जस्ट गेव यू द इंफॉर्मेशन इनफ टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दैट वॉज ऑल्सो द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ दिस सिचुएशन so without giving you the uh, the dead details and the destruction which actually happened on that day he just gave you what actually happened in a very humorous style uh, which make you uh, you know realize the gravity of the situation which they have actually faced on that particular day so this is it for today and thank you